Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to my channel, uh, Keetra Sherelle, Yisrael, Sisters to Sister segment. Thank you for coming to my channel where we encourage sisters who are willing to go forward and be restored back to Yah's ways of doing things and for them to grow up and become the full grown sister. So today we are going to go over pretty much the basics and uh, the foundations of who we are and what we need to do to be back restored uh, to Yahweh's ways of doing things for us. So uh, daughters of Zion, daughters of Zion, daughters of Zion, as you know we are a part of the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. Um, there's different parts uh, that play a part in the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. So uh, we are a part of that, men and women are, but I'm talking to uh, the women. So uh, we want to make sure that we uh, go over the things and the basic things that um, we need to do to go forward in replenishing and restoring our life, restoring and growing, you know, every day in the Word, growing in our everyday uh, duties that we have as a woman, growing in uh, communication and learning how to communicate with in different relationships, not just with your husband, but also with children and uh, other people in our lives. We want to be brought back um, to restoration and the rightful place um, that we need to be back to um, because there's so many things that are out of line that we are doing. Some of us don't know <laughs> what we're doing and some of us know and just continue um, to want to do it. So just hold on. We're going to get through it. Uh, we're going to go back to the basics and we're going to get this thing together so that we can have a wonderful, you know, prosperous, blessed life instead of the curses. Okay, we don't want any curses. So let's continue. So many of you know that we are the Israelites, the people of the Bible, the so-called black people, and we are all scattered across the four corners of the earth. Um, our ancestors were brought over here, forced to come over to this land of our captivity, and that's how we got here. We've been over here, and that's happened like decades and uh, centuries ago. The Bible talks about that in the Torah, which is uh, better known for most people as the Old Testament. Um, it talks about that in Deuteronomy 28. Now, the Most High plainly spoke to us and told us Israelites, that uh, which is the so-called black people in the Bible told us that if we do not hearken to his voice and obey him his laws the statutes and commandments that he will curse us curse our generations um, put cursings on us uh, throughout our generations to come those things are the things that we do not want. We do not want to have uh, curses. We already have curses right now. Curses of, are upon us in our captivity here uh, in America and around the world. But these are the things that we want to leave behind. We want to get on the straight and narrow path with the Father so that we can go forward and have the blessings instead of the curses because the curses are what we want to leave behind. Um, as men and women, but I'm talking to the women. So um, the things, I'm going to go over some things uh, that we need to do in order to do that a little bit later. But let's right now go over the curses. Okay, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 through 24. It says, but if you will not obey the voice of thy Yah, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today. Then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Curse shall you be in the cities, curse shall you be in the fields. Curse shall you be basket and your kneading bold. Curse shall be the fruits of your womb, the fruits of your ground, the increase of your herds and the young of the flock cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out the Lord or Yah will send on you curses confusions and frustrations in all that you undertake to do 
until you are destroyed and perish quickly in account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken him. Yahuwah will make the pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. The Lord Yah will strike you with wasting disease and with fever, inflammation, and fairy heat, and with drought, and with blot, and with mildew. Thy shall pursue you until you perish, and the heavens over your head shall be bronze, and the earth under you shall be iron. Yah will make the rain of thy land powder from heaven. Dust shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The next verses are uh, verses 32 through 34. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to other people while your eyes look on and fail with longing for them all day long. But you shall be helpless. A nation that you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your grounds and of all your laborers, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continuously, so that you are driven mad by the sights that the eyes see. Yah will strike you on the knees and on the legs with grievous boils of which you cannot be healed from sole of your from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head. Also the chapter um or verse we're still in chapter uh twenty eight of Deuteronomy. We're reading right now uh verses forty five through forty eight. All these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you till you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of thy Yah to keep his commandments and his statutes that he commanded you. They shall be a sign and a wonder against you and your offsprings forever because you did not serve Yah with joyfulness and gladness of heart because of the abundance of all things. Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, verse 64 Yah will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to another and there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone which neither you nor your fathers have known. So I just read some of the curses um, in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Um, there are more so uh, you can go back and read those in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Um, I will list the scriptures in the description box. So did you hear that? Did you hear those curses? Those curses are just terrible. That would destroy us. He wanted to, he said he was going to destroy us. Okay. So we don't want that. Okay. So we know I mean, you know, that's not the way of life. That's not the way um, that we need to live. But, you know, the enemy has, and the oppressors have been oppressing us for years and years and years. For example, you know, a lot of things happen to people all over the world, not just our nation, not just our culture. A lot of things happen more so to us than, than them. So a lot of things that have come against us, you know, our oppressors here in this world. The oppressors were um, starting years ago, have started years ago to break up the unit of the black home for the man and the woman. So what they've tried to do is demolish the man, make him be emasculated uh, by women, um, take the man out of the house, you know. And when she feels like she has to do everything, then she feels like she doesn't need a man and she feels like she's the leader and that she can be over the man. And that right there is out of order. You know, that is in, we emasculate men, a lot of women emasculate men and some, some women don't even know this because this is how they grew up in their house household and this is all they knew how to do and so we're, a lot of us are not aware of it but we need to become aware of those things and um, we need to take them to our father and then we need to get the right ruach the right spirit the right ruach uh, in us so that we can you know manifest and, and go forward and continue to have substance and grow in the word and and walk in the ways of Yah 
uh, with the Holy Spirit um, with the Ruach. This is out of order how, you know, life has been going with us in the so-called black community here. And um, it has to change. We have to get back to our rightful place. Decades ago, you know, we, of course, uh, we had the woman, you know, our, our, we had great unity in our, in our black uh, community and homes, you know. Black men and women were married and, you know, had plenty of kids, excuse me, pl plenty of children. And um, the woman stayed at home, cooked, cleaned, and took care of the children. And the man went out and worked. And um, it's a little different in this era, but it's still, we need to get back to those basic things in this modern day and time. Things are so out of order, you know, uh, the woman is the weaker vessel. So we need to know this. We need to understand the ways of Yah and that we need to grow in Him and make sure uh, that we are setting ourselves up for success in the word and not doing the devilish things that uh, can easily just come upon us to do. We want to encourage other women, all of us should be encouraging other women to do the same so there can be a domino effect uh, so that we can get rid of this disease that we have in the world with the things that go on with us here in this world. We need to at least do our part. So, of course, the men, they're going to do their part, but we'll help um, if we can change our ways and, and do the right things that we need to do um, through Yah and through the Spirit and let the Ruach uh, guide us in that way. Okay, I'm going to read a few scriptures so we can go over some things that us women have to work on. All right, of course, we know that we need to take care of the, the children and our husbands and things like that. We'll go over uh, some of those things in the future. I'll do some videos on it. Also, if you could like, comment, and subscribe if um, you like my videos. Um, and then put in the comments if you, uh, what you would like to hear, uh, what you would like for me to talk about in the future. Um, but right now, we're at Proverbs chapter 14 and 1. It says, every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So, we don't want to be that woman that is plucking her house down and bickering and arguing. We want to be the helpmeet that we need to be. Um, helping the children, helping other women, uh, the younger women, and being kind. Uh, having self-control and having control over our mouth. We don't want to destroy our households. Uh, this is, you know, uh, in our households with our husbands, our children, um, even in relationships, uh, just having friends, friendships. You don't want to be a, a, a person that destroys those things. You want to uh, be a person that um, has a friend that and your friend loves you because you uh, present love and you present self-control. You present uh, happiness and, and different things like that. And so uh, we don't want to be foolish women. We want to shut up when we need to shut up. We're going to Proverbs uh, 21 9. Um, it says, It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a broiling woman in a wide home. So, ladies, we need to quit bickering and quarreling. I mean, it said it's better to be in a little old corner in a, in a housetop rather than to be with a woman in a big old wide house where you can go any any different place you want to <laughs> so that means it's really really terrible so um we're gonna have to not be noisy women we're gonna have to have self-control learn when to speak and things like that of that nature okay so we have here uh proverbs chapter 30 verse 20 such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Now this right here is a woman um, that is not acknowledging uh, her wrongs at all. You have to acknowledge your wrongs. You have to examine yourself um, <clears throat> and look at your wrongs and, and confess your wrongs, confess your sins. Um, uh, and come to repentance, um, you know, in Yahshua's name. So we don't want to be that woman. Um, you don't want to be running your mouth. And uh, you want to be quiet. You want to know when to speak. How to speak and when to speak. Uh, especially, you know, to anyone. Especially in your household with your children, with your husband. You know, learn when to speak. Learn when to not 
when you don't need to say anything. If you're in a, uh, trying to communicate something, lower your voice and um, speak in a certain tone that you know that that is a good tone and express yourself when it's time to do that. But if you're in a heated argument or something, it's just time to be quiet and then revisit the situation later when the both of you, you and your um, ish, you and your ishes uh, get together and y'all are calm and y'all are in a good place, then you'll be able to sit down and talk and communicate at that time and just learn how to speak and talk and communicate without all the bickering and quarreling. And, you know, sometimes, you know, of course, you know, we have to listen to our husbands. They are our head. But sometimes they can be wrong, but the Father will deal with them, okay? We will have to pray. If, if something is wrong and we know that it's wrong, we have to express ourselves in the way that we need to without the bickering and quarreling and nagging. But uh, we also have to go to the go and pray and get on our knees and pray, uh, pray in your closet, pray. Okay, that's the important thing, praying about it. And the Father will handle it, uh, handle the situation how it needs to be handled. Okay, the other uh, scripture that I want to go over uh, is Proverbs 27, verse 15, uh, says, A continual dripping, a, a continual dropping in a very rainy day, and a contentious woman are alike. So, a continual dripping or droppings in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are like. Can you imagine, uh, you know, drips of rain just you know, on a dry, cold day just dropping on you over and over and over again uh, continuously? It may be like a split second between the drops and it just keep going. That is so annoying. And that's what the scripture is also saying. It is so annoying and uncalled for and uh, it's irritating um so we don't want to be that contentious woman uh we want we don't want to be arguing and not having self-control we have work to do ladies we have a lot of work to do um a lot of us go through that we have to die of our flesh and and i'm speaking from experience as well you know in that but we have to die of our flesh and we have to just uh, go forward when when things come up, we just have to go to the Word and we have to go to our go to our Father um, in Yahushua's name. So we just need to um, continue that over and over again. Prayer changes things, and so that we can not be that contentious woman, because that is not going to help the household go forward and move forward in a prosperous, um, loving home. You are supposed to be here to have make the house a home. A loving home, you know, a home where your husband and your children will want to come to and be able to, you know, communicate and feel comfortable. You know, you want to make, make home comfort. You want to make the home comfortable for, uh, for them, for your children and your family. And so doing, by doing that, uh, you have to have all of that strife and negativity out of your mouth and out of your heart and your home. And so that's what we are here for today. This is Proverbs chapter 5, verse 6. I think this is in the NIV version. Um, she gives no thought to the way of life. Her past wanders aimlessly, but she does not know it. Mm, mm, mm. So this uh, is a woman uh, without purpose. Um, she's just living life day by day, not having any goals or thinking about where she's going, what direction she's going. You know, we don't want to be there... Um, most of us have been there, uh, but we don't want to be there and stay there. Uh, we want to have goals. We want to know where we're going. We want to have know our purpose in life. And we, we will only get that through living life and going forward in Yah's word, in Yahweh's word. Um, so we definitely don't want to do that. Um, we want to be restored back to the truth and uh, the purpose for our lives. Don't, let's not be this woman. Let's take heed. Let's, and we definitely don't want to no, not know where we're going. We definitely don't want to want to be have be in a reprobate mind or not know where we're going. You know, we want to have some. We want to know this at the earliest stage in life as we can. And so, some of us have. Some of us know where we're going and knew from a young age. Some of us knew, you know, in middle age. And some of us are learning um, at this age and time. 
now where we're going. So, you know, everybody's at different stages, but as long as you have breath in your body, you have time to learn and to heal and to go forward in the purpose that uh, Yah has for you. He also said, if we do obey him and hearken unto his voice and keep the commandments, uh, the laws, statutes, and commandments, then he will um, bestow blessings upon us and our generations to come. So that is what we're looking forward to. That is what we are wanting. And we have to find out how we need to get there to do that. So now that we have went over the curses and know what uh, some of the different curses are um, going to happen to us, uh, let's go ahead and go over some of the blessings that the Father Yah wants to um, have bestowed upon us um, if we follow his laws, statutes, and also his commandments. This is Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28 verses 1 through 14. And if you faithfully obey the voice of your Yah, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, Yah your Yah will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of your Yah, blessed shall you be in the cities, blessed shall you be in the fields, blessed shall you be with the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your grounds and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall be you be when you go out. Y'all will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Yah will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake and he will bless you in the land that that he your Yah is giving you Yah will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of thy Yah and walk in his ways and all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Yah, and thy shall be afraid of you. And Yah will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruits of your womb, and in the fruits of your livestock, and in the fruits of your grounds, within the land that Yah swore to your fathers to give you. Yah will open to you his good treasures, his good treasury in heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And Yah will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down if you obey the commandments of thy Yah which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today to the right hand or to the left hand to go after other gods to serve them. So that is what we want. We want the blessings and not the cursing. So um, this is what we need and this is what we want. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to go over uh, some things that you can read to start your restoration journey. Um, you know, some of us women are seasoned in these things. Uh, some of us are at the beginning stages and some of us are just too busy and have not taken out the time to dig into the foundation of restoration back to Yah. Uh, simplest scriptures are important they are very important you should not look at certain scriptures and be like oh oh yeah um restoration i uh, i'm gonna do that and oh let yeah i have to repent uh, i'm gonna repent okay it's not nothing to be feeling dull about it's not nothing to you know put aside this is our lives this is our destiny this this is our purpose 
and uh, to just make scriptures uh, simple, like or dull, to where you know it doesn't really, really, really mean anything to you. It's just they're just there, and you're not really implementing them. And you're not really taking them serious. You have to take them serious, you know. Um, all is important, and we need to take them all serious. So, you know, a lot of people skip the foundation of everything and then just jump ahead and have no type of foundation, no type of layout, no type of foundation, or, um, you know, to walk through or gain the foundation uh, and substance at all um, of how to restore, how to be restored with getting their Ruach right and, you know, spending time praising the Most High. So those are things that we need to get back to and work on because uh, this is how people will be turned away from Yah, okay? Um, Yah said, uh, you know, you people will be saying, you know, Lord, Lord, Yah, Yah, you know, we have prophesied, we have laid hands on the sick, we have did this, we have did that. And he, had, he says, depart from me, I never knew you, you know? I mean, those people were practicing lawlessness. They were not even keeping the statutes and commandments at all. Those people, the wickedness is still in their hearts. Um, they have not done anything to, to get it get it out of. They just skip over everything and just going forward and other things that they um, could just wait on and so that they can get back to the foundation of uh, and the meat of everything and the substance of everything so that they can get their heart which is the foundation, their spirit, the Ruach, which is the foundation of it all so that they can stand on solid ground. You know, you got to get your hearts right and clean um, with him. And they didn't show themselves approved. I mean, you know, they just skipped over important rules and regulations. So we don't want to do that. We want to, um, if we have done that, we want to go back to the basics because this is what, we're speaking of and 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 basics is a is a lot <laughs> you know what i'm saying a lot of us uh older people uh young people or young people middle aged people or older people are are skipping over things and not really paying attention not really getting to the root uh, and the um bottom of things and so that sometimes we're going to have to go back to first grade in the bible um if you understand what i'm saying Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get into some of this. I'm going to lay out uh, some things that you can go over to start your um, divine purpose of restoration with the Yah. Um, so the first thing you need to do is acknowledge Yah and His Son, Yahshua, Yahusha, and uh, believe and have faith, okay? So we have... Um, Hebrews 11:6 saying, and without faith it is impossible to please Yah, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Have faith as small as a mustard seed. Also, you you have to know that faith can grow bigger and better than. Um, you know, as, as small as a mustard seed, okay? It can go uh, way, way beyond that. Uh, and by having faith and believing and not doubting is very, very important on your journey. Okay, the next thing is repentance. Um, repentance, we have to repent. Um, we have First John chapter 1, uh, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness so uh, we must recognize our sins you know examine ourselves look at ourselves you know some things when we well, sometimes when we look at ourselves we may not like what we see we may even cry and say how did i get like this or why did i have to be like this so and so am i like this why do i have this in me but a lot of people have different things, you know, uh, different levels and different things that's going on with them. Um, you know, some some people don't, you know, don't seem to have um, certain sins and then have other hidden sins within them that nobody really can see. 
uh, totally, you know what I'm saying? So we have to get those out too. Those are important to get out too because they can send you, send you to the lake of fire. You don't want to be in all of that uh, and not keeping the commandments and all of that and having wicked hearts. Uh, we must recognize our sins uh, to repent. We must admit to ourselves that we have sinned um, and think about the sins that you've done and cry and, and, and weep and tell y'all, forgive me. I have sinned. So what is a immoral woman? So a immoral woman is someone who's transgressing, you know, accepting uh, rules, you know, accepting moral, uh, immoral thoughts, corrupt thoughts in the mind, um, sexual um, encounters, promiscuous, being promiscuous, um, unethical, witchcraft. You know, name it. It's, it's a, a lot of uh, sins and some hidden sins that, you know, some mo uh, cannot see unless you have discernment. Um, so it's a lot of wicked things that could be in our hearts as uh, people, but as uh, women as well. So we need to take a look at ourselves and, and deep and on, on a deep surface and just say, you know, Father, forgive me. We must feel very, very sorrowful for our sins. Uh, be sorrowful with weeping and tears in your heart and soul. Uh, we must forsake our sins. We have to forsake them. We have to say, you know, we have to hate them. And we have to say, look, this is not of me. And, and, and you're going to have to pray and pray all of that out and then start walking in the right way um, uh, in purpose. Start, walking, uh, start doing, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, um, and just, you know, turn away from the sins in disgust. You have to turn away from, from them in disgust. You need to be disgusted with them. So start learning and studying the word of Yah. Um, also, you can fast and pray for what you want, you know, for what you want to understand. Like, if you don't understand some fast and pray, and the Father can reveal that to you if you are married uh, and you're Ish, uh, you have a Ish, you have a husband, he will teach you, you know, while you're learning and studying. So uh, just remember that uh, while you're on your journey. So we have Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Yah. So when you're hearing the word of Yah, um, that is substance that is meat that is uh living water you know and so you need to be partakers of it of all of it uh, we must fast and pray psalms chapter 69 verse 10 when i wept and chastened my soul with fasting that was to my reproach so uh, this is the way to humble yourself in the sight, um, in the sight of Yah, and hear Him more clearly uh, when you're fasting, fasting, and then uh, being guided by the Ruach Hakadosh. Um, prayer changes things. So let me give you a little testimony, give you a little, um, um, tell your story. Um, one of the times when I was fasting, I fasted for around seven to eight whole days, um, and I was drinking, you know, nutritious liquid drinks and water. Some some was thick, you know, and um, doing coffee enemas and different things like that. Um, I was at home at the time uh, doing this, and um, blessings started to manifest through this um, fast, you know, um, afterwards, and big and little little blessings you know um and so i remember at around that time of fasting i had a car um that i had to keep pouring liquid it was a liquid substance that you know it was like purple dark purple i didn't i forgot what it was called um that of course goes into the car um but it's supposed to stay in the car and it was always leaking out and for and for me to drive the car to take my daughter to school I had to have a like a pan or a container up under the car uh, for the liquid to leak out into it and when it was time um, to go take her to her uh, where she needed to go um, to school and everything I had to pour it 
in the I had to pour it uh, in the part where it needed to go and hurry up and drive her to school and come back before it leaked out again. Um, it was really, really, really something else. So, um, and because it, you know, if it leaked all out while driving it, um, it would stop on you. Okay, my car would stop on you and you could not drive it. So it had to have the liquid substance in there to drive it. If it leaked out while you was trying to drive home, it'll stop on you and you'll be trying to call a cab or uh, get a tow truck or something. Uh, then when I got home, I had to put the pan or container right back up under the car for it to leak in, you know, leak in uh, the same thing over and over again. Um, you know, I went back to pick her up and, you know, it was just really, really crazy. So eventually the car stopped working and you know it's around winter time winter time and very very cold so i was walking my daughter to school while i had my son in a stroller um it took about a whole hour to uh walking her uh 30 minutes there 30 minutes back uh, no bus line or anything in the area it was times uh where i would ask a neighbor uh to take me but of course you know people have things to do places to go and I didn't want to have to keep doing that um, and asking and everything. So, uh, and mind you, at one time, uh, there were some strange guys um, that seemed to be following behind us, uh, walking behind us when I was walking home with, uh, with my daughter and uh, my son in a stroller, and it's cold, and I have a blanket on top of the stroller trying to keep him from being sick, and, you know, all of this is going on. As I was walking one day, uh, coming back from taking my daughter, but we managed to get home uh, before they caught up with us. Uh, they were walking behind us as well. It was kind of scary at that time. All right, so then, you know, I prayed. I went ahead and prayed and asked the Father for a new car, a new vehicle. I let him know I just wanted my car to be new, whatever it was, in Yahushua's name. Of course, at that time, I didn't know his um, uh, the names like I know them now. Um, and we all call them different things, but mean the same. Uh, but as far as Yahusha, I did not know that name at that particular time, of course. Um, but the spirit was real, and he knew, you know, what I was talking, who I was talking to. I was praying throughout my fast and everything. Different things manifested um, in. Uh, at this time, in this time, um, y'all revealed to me and showed me things and helped me remember a song. Uh, he did many things uh, and, and revealed many things to me at that time. I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, but he uh, brought back a song, a secular song that I turned into a, um, a gospel song, a truth song. Um, it was uh, very, very amazing, um, some of the things that he revealed to me. Um, like I said, I won't go over all of them, uh, but just know they were all amazing. They were amazing. But anyway, uh, back to the story. So after I prayed for my car, I started thanking him for my car. Every day I would thank him. Um, you know, whenever, wherever I was, I would go. I would thank him um, for the new car. I didn't ask for a used car. I said, I want whatever it is, I wanted a new car because I was tired of that, that car made me so tired and dreadful. You know, I was thankful for the car while I was working, but it, it made me so tired and dreadful uh, the way that I had to deal with that car. And, um, you know, it was not helping me at all. And so I needed a, a big change and I wanted something that was dependable. You know, with a new car, pretty much you can't go wrong, even if it's not the greatest uh, made car <laughs> in the world. <laughs> if it's a new car, and it's decently made, then, you know, I felt like I was good. Um, and it was actually a, a it was a, a Kia, I don't know what year, it was 2001 or two, or it was back then, not 2001 or two, it was 2000, I don't know, six or five, 2005, somewhere around in there. Um, but, um, I would go and I would look for cars and just thank him for my car. Um, I went to the mall one day and seen a car, you know, how they were sitting in the mall. They used to be sitting in the mall. 
uh, I filled out a form, you know, for the car and uh, to see if I could get it, you know, um, and I thanked him for my car, even though uh, whether it was that one or not, you know, I was thanking him and it was not that car, you know, I didn't get that car, but I, but I was in there filling out that paperwork. Thank you, Father, for my car. Thank you, because I've already prayed for it. Thank you for my car. Um, whether it's this one, if it's this one, thank you. If it's not, still thank you. That's how I was doing it. Uh, but I just continued to thank him and everything. So a few days after the man, um, the men that was following us, um, that it, it just seemed like they were following us at that time. I believe that they were. It was a lot of them, and it's like they were trying to catch up with us. Uh, but we end up turning and, and going a, a totally different way and they just kept on because they was looking at us like, I don't know, they didn't look right. But anyway, it was on a weekend um, when they did when they did this, it was around um, or like right before the weekend or that Friday or something like that. I said, and then um, that Saturday, I said, Father, I believe uh, that if you want to bless me this weekend with a new car, if you will bless me with the car. I just told him, I said, if you want to bless me with the car, you can bless me with the car, and I thank you in advance uh, for this car. I said, if you, if I don't need to have it uh, right now, or um, then, you know, I, I just won't have it, but I believe that if you wanted to, you could bless me with this car this weekend, but I still thank you for this car. I'm still going to thank you. <laughs> I kept doing it over and over again. I'm still going to thank you for my car. Um, whenever I get it, but I believe that I can have my new car this weekend. And that's what I told him. <laughs> I had the car and a new car at that, that weekend, that Sunday. Um, I had no job. I had no money, um, to put down for the new car. It was a great blessing. And it all, um, you know, happened and everything while I was, um, you know, on the fast and everything. And so it was a blessing, and I just praise y'all for it. Hallelujah. I was so happy um, because uh, when I had to take my daughter to school the next day, I got in my car, my new car, uh, which is that Monday, with heat in there. It was heat in the car. Uh, for me and my children, I was just so happy we had a new CD player. I put my children in the car, my son in his car seat, and my daughter in her um, seat belt. I remember, <laughs> I remember all of that. I remember just looking in the back seat. I just looked in the back seat and was relieved that my children were warm and safe and sound. All praises to the Most High. Hallelujah. It was such a wonderful blessing, y'all. Uh, so please fast and pray. That's I wanted to tell y'all my testimony. Please fast and pray. So uh, praying, um, we definitely know that praying is what we need to do. Always pray and learn how to pray. But Yah's prayer is the prayer that we must know that is important for us to pray. Um, so our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. So be it. So, um, yes, we must um, pray. We must um, make restitution, uh, seek restoration, and take back what the enemy has stole from us. Um, we must forgive others. Uh, the Most High said in Matthew uh, chapter 6, uh, 15, that if we do not forgive others of their trespasses, then he will not forgive us for ours. So we need to do that. We need to uh, learn how to forgive. Um, and we must keep the statutes and the commandments of Yah. Um, so you can read this information in the Torah. Um, you know, um, 
this information as far as uh, the old te in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy, Le Leviticus, and Exodus. Most um, of all of this is in the Torah. Uh, some some of the categories of the law, statutes, and commandments are um, the moral laws. This is what you can read in the Torah. Um, uh, but the categories are not in there like the way that I'm saying them. Uh, but these are the categories from what I've learned. Um, moral laws, dietary laws, uh, ceremonial laws, uh, sacrificial laws, and civil laws uh, from what my Ish explained to me. Uh, I'm not sure if that is all of the categories or if I put too many in there, but uh, that's about around what it is. I may have uh, left out uh, some or something, but uh, my Ish will do a lesson on it um, in the near future. So, um, But we are striving to keep them the best of our ability. Um, remember, we have Yahshua, we have Yahushua, and he is the lamb, okay? So Yahushua is the lamb. We have repentance. So as long as we have breath in our body, we are able to go forward in the law, statutes, and commandments to keep them, okay? Start walking in the truth. Start thanking the Father, Yah, in Yahushua's name for your restoration. Start thanking him for that you are healed, you are clean, you you have the victory. Start seeing yourself restored and start your journey in walking in his ways for you, okay? Woman of Yah, okay, women of Yah, daughters of Zion. Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. And Proverbs uh, 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And I promise y'all, I did not mean for this video to be this long at all, but I wanted to get in uh, some things and some basic things um, and want to get in everything that I felt that y'all had revealed to me to put into this video uh, so that um, we could have the foundation to work with to be restored. Okay, women of y'all? So that is it for today. I hope that this... Uh, lesson which was the basics and what we were talking about we'll talk about some more things uh, throughout this channel of course we're going to have a wonderful time doing so and uh, getting restored back to Yah's way for our lives uh, my name is Keetra Sherelle this channel is Keetra Sherelle Yisrael and looking forward to seeing you next time please leave comments below to let me know what you would like to see on this channel for the sister the sisters segments Thank you, Barack you, and have a wonderful evening. Shalom.